ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here today and to speak to you to such an important topic. This forum takes place in a very difficult but timely moment. The seeds for transformation are growing into sustainable ways of doing things. There are alliances between countries and alliances between cities. There is the engagement by the citizens, the companies and scientists. There are examples of successful projects that promote change towards sustainability. Thus, I believe we should not measure real success on the basis of its outcome document only. Rio has been an incubator for very concrete projects in the field and it has emphasized the importance of bringing together public and private partners at a more global level. In contrast to Rio's Earth Summit of 1992, many big companies were prominently represented in Rio this time. Most of them have understood that dealing with sustainability and ecology questions will benefit not only their image, but their long-term business interests as well. Ladies and gentlemen, mutual dependencies between prosperous and poor countries are increasing in an accelerated way. This parent prosperity combined with ecological risks, an absence of global sustainability, a lack of governance and resource scarcities are about to transform the playing field for politics, business and civil society. At the same time, digital connectivity is changing our societies and the way we interact. Global risks are interrelated, they do not respect national borders, the challenges of climate and environmental change, loss of biodiversity, water problems, diseases, food insecurity, etc. requires states to act as intermediaries between external and domestic requirements. Global risks are having a massive influence on the development perspectives and opportunities of poor countries and poor people. Poverty reduction and tackling global risks are closely linked. The Millennium Development Goals have identified development priorities across a very broad range of issues, as you know, including health, education, gender, environment, and so on. The NDGs represent an unprecedented global consensus on measures to reduce poverty. With only three years left to meet these objectives, there are, however, mixed results to report. The NDG picture has become blurred because of a series of shock financial markets, economic uh, crisis, food, energy, and so on. Even though there has been significant progress with regard to the NDGs, a much more concerted effort is needed to achieve the development goals by 2015. The number of people living in extreme poverty in East Asia and Pacific region has indeed decreased. In Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, in contrast, their number remains high and is likely to increase. Where progress has been measured at the national level, it is very often uneven within countries. About one third of developing countries are fragile states. They are largely responsible for the energies not being met. Violence and conflict in these complex environments present policymakers with a very different set of requirements in terms of aid and development. 
the Rio Plus 20 conference has launched a debate on the question, does the MDG approach need rethinking? Do we need another way of looking at poverty and development? My answer is yes. And this forum is in my view an opportunity to show new direct solutions to ponder uh, on this issue as well. I would like to provide you some input for your discussion. Resource constraints, water scarcity, climate change and many other factors <coughs> remind us that we are approaching and already exceeding the planet's ability to satisfy humanity, uh, humanity's appetite for growth. The risk of uncontrollable changes in the ecosystem imply far-reaching consequences for societies, economies and international relations. This is likely to trigger new conflicts in many of the poor regions in the world. The uneven spread of the negative effects of environmental changes and subsequent consequences on the conditions of human life and survival is becoming a much more important aspect for development policy. The same holds true for issues related to global justice. Ladies and gentlemen, the negotiations on sustainability issues impressively show how a worldview constrained by national perspectives can lead to fatal misperception of risks. In a world of interdependencies, the prosperous countries are challenged to focus attention on, on the point where risks, poverty, vulnerability and loss of dignity meet. Only by changing the pattern of thinking can rights and responsibilities be negotiated with reference to the overall global common good. A management of global risks which runs counter to the attempts to fight poverty cannot build the coalition needed to succeed. Many of today's challenges in the field of development, poverty reduction or yet environmental protection call for innovation not only technical, but also social and institutional ones. The close cooperation of all players, state, business, civil society, is necessary. Innovative answers must be developed in a multipolar context, defined still by national policies, by bilateral and multilateral agreements, into trans and supranational institutions, multinational corporations and civil society networks. We have the technology, knowledge and, I believe, also financial resources to overcome global risks. The decisive question, however, is whether we will be successful in narrowing the gap between diverging interests and diverging perceptions. To make international cooperation successful in balancing divergent interests, a dialogue about norms and values, about norms and values is crucial. Communication that only takes place in the language of one of the partners rapidly goes in the wrong direction. Every solution toward greater sustainability will affect people differently and will involve the distribution of responsibilities within and between generations. The development of benchmarks for fair burden sharing calls for particularly close cooperation, especially with the people in the regions affected by poverty. Our societies must go through changes in their institutional and cultural heritage that are comparable to the transformation experienced during the first industrial revolution. This transition requires responsible thinking based on collective self-interest and openness to discussion on values, priorities and justice.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have entered a polycentric world where also local, <laughs> national, regional and global processes are inseparably linked. In an interconnected world, states make decisions not only for their own people, but for others too. That's why a more pluralistic version of governance is needed which attaches importance not only to nation states, but also to local governments, multilateral agencies, transnational actors, business for a non-governmental organization, civil society groups, human rights and advocacy uh, groups. Decoupling human progress from inadequate use of natural resources, environmental degradation is the challenge of our time. This challenge is also one of the crucial sources of successful business. Private sector behavior largely influences the community's standard of living and the environment. Companies take responsibility and adopt good governance principles, recognizing that human rights, upholding environmental and financial standards are an important means on the way towards achieving the Millennium Development Goals and favoring sustainable development. Private companies are challenging challenge to increasingly mainstream sustainability aspects throughout their portfolio of activities rather than limiting themselves to promoting philanthropic activities besides their main business. I am convinced that in a world of resource scarcity, growing environmental risks and of strong civil society awareness on social justice, sustainability aspects will ever more become a decisive factor for economic success. Partnerships between the private and public sectors and civil society organizations may facilitate more effective and innovative solutions to global problems. Such partnerships among various stakeholders can better address the complex and interdependent issues of sustainable and inclusive development. They can overcome shortcomings in a state-centered approach. Stronger public governance of development issues at the national and international level remains thus crucial. Policymakers and civil society actors can contribute to the achievement of business-led solutions. The growing level of engagement and interest within the private sector suggests that there is considerable scope for fruitful and effective collaboration. Ultimately, sustainable development in a world of increasing scarcity is also a question of imagination. Imagination is everything, it is the preview of life's coming attractions. This remark by Albert Einstein may be the way. While previously a large part of human learning could be summarized as once beaten, twice shine, our imagination is asked to pave the way before the damage has occurred. I hope this forum helps to preview the attractions of a more sustainable world. Thank you very much for your attention.